So many things have changed in the last couple of years. There's been a lot of changes for me over the last few, you know, four or five years. It's morning. It's a pretty cool place that I slept at. I didn't have a great sleep though. Real restless. It wasn't the fault of the place, I don't think. But anyway. Check it out. Okay, I'm about 20 feet up the trail and I'm already surrounded by a lot of wild plant food. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna go over everything, but I'm gonna cover a few plants as I go for this walk and talk about those. Maybe it'll be a bit more than a few, but we'll see. Okay, our first plant of the day is a bunch berry. It's this one here with the white flower. It's actually part of the dogwood tree family, although it doesn't actually grow into a tree. This is as big as it gets. It'll produce a small cluster berry in the middle that's red in color. It's got a mild apple flavor to it. You can eat the berry, the seeds, and all that. As far as the rest of the plant goes, I'm really not sure, so I just kind of leave that one for now, but uh, you can eat the berries off this guy. All right, so this plant here is called Oregon Grape. Um, the leaves are kind of a plasticky feel. They've got little spikes on the edges and uh, it's similar to holly in a sense. The um, flowers when they do come out are a yellow color and they produce these berries. There's not many on this plant, but the berries will turn a very deep dark purple and they've got a sour taste to them. Um, generally, most people don't like the flavor of them, but they're really good for you, high in antioxidants. There's a couple other things you can do with this plant. There's a um, 
just under the bark of the plant is a yellow like color um, it's quite yellow similar to turmeric and it's actually got some similar properties to it but we're talking about a very thin layer that's surrounding the stem of the plant and um, you can get it by harvesting the whole plant and just scraping it all off and collecting all the yellow portion or you can um, just take a small portion off the side of a growing plant now these are small plants so um, in the case of these ones it's it's almost easier just to harvest a whole plant um, and to do that with but in certain parts of the west coast you'll find much bigger versions of these these ones are a short one this is about as big as they get um, but you can also see these things that grow six feet tall and they look like a big bush and they produce lots of flowers lots of grapes and stuff like that and in cases like that you can just scrape off a little bit off of one of the branches to get what you need to make a topical ointment some just to work for dry skin like eczema and stuff like that and I suppose the last thing you can do with that one is just uh, make a, a dye for clothing and that'll also work as well so I've never done that before but uh, apparently that's something you could do and this little guy right here is uh, a salau plant. They are very prevalent around the west coast here. They produce a small berry that's quite delicious and uh, high in pectin. There's a lot of these plants around. And just in the back there is a red huckleberry bush. Not the best example of it, so I'll show it again later, but it does make some tasty red berries. Lots of ferns in the area, of course, too. This one is a bracken fern. You wouldn't want to eat this fern. It's just an example of one of the many types of ferns that are out here. And you got to be careful with your ferns. A lot of them will have high carcinogens and stuff like that. There are fiddleheads that you can get that are safe, but um, still yet, it's almost best to avoid them altogether. I don't actually need to walk very far to uh, find plants that I'm interested in. They're all around me. <laughs> But uh, I just also want to go for a walk and just stretch my eyes. And uh, something real therapeutic about that. spruce needles so I'll just put them in my cup there we go let that steep for a bit So uh, I got some changes coming ahead that are going to be somewhat public anyway, just because of, you know, obvious reasons, I suppose. So what's happening is my, my daughter and my ex are going to be moving away. They're going to be moving to Bali and that's quite a long ways off in a way. Um, and it's going to change things a little bit for everybody. And it's been a decision that I haven't made lightly. Of course, I'm only one side of that decision. And uh, my daughter at this point is too young to really make a decision on her own. And I, in a way, I wish she, uh, she was old enough to comprehend time and space the way an adult would be able to. Um, she might understand the magnitude of the move and what that will mean with my relationship with her. Now we're still gonna stay in touch on FaceTime and stuff like that. And I know uh, there's limitations to that, but we're gonna try and meet up twice a year, or maybe more than that, depending on finances and circumstances and all that sort of stuff. This decision has been weighing on me for years. It was something that I knew might have to come around at some point in time.
I definitely feel sad. Uh, you know, uh, so there, there'll be a bit of a grieving process to work through here. I almost put myself into my daughter a little bit and feel like there could be some sadness that she's going to be grieving as well. It's hard to say what that's going to look like. Uh, she might not process it the same way I had imagined she would, so it's it's really not my place to project. But in any case, the the, the important thing is that I I. I am still her dad and I'm still going to love her unconditionally and um, support her every step of the way. It'll just be different in that she's going to be spending part of her life away from me for a little while and maybe we might get back together again and, and be closer to one another and um, be able to uh, do a little bit more and hopefully that's sooner than later. Um, I'm going to try my best to share a little bit of backstory um, to put this together. And um, before I get into that, I also want to say it's, a, it's important to note that there's going to be a very positive outcome to all of this. At least um, that's the energy that I'm putting into it. And that's the energy that my ex-partner is putting into it. And, um, you know it's a bit scary right now because that's a that's a big deal and uh it, it takes a lot of strength to hold that and and be able to lean into it the way i'm doing um and there's so much i could say so much i could say you know we had a not a very long relationship with one another, but we had different visions for our lives. I felt like maybe I could, you know, convince her to uh, follow me and, and lead a life with me. And and she was kind of, of of the opinion that maybe I could follow her and live a life with her. And, you know, it, it touched on some heartstrings and some strings in each of us following our own integrity. And I, uh, I deviated away from my own self in the relationship. And um, I got to a pretty unhealthy place because of it. And uh, it, it's kind of my tendency to do that sort of thing. And then before, before I knew it, I was, I was kind of going along with things that, that weren't really in line with with myself and um, there, there's some there's a big lesson in that that I had to digest and um, you know my ex-partner had a, a big lesson as well in all of this and uh, we both have grown quite a bit from the uh, the relationship we had with one another and uh, we both care for each other so a fair amount even today and we both very much love our daughter and uh, even though we're we kind of for the time being are on a different trajectory in life we're trying to um, we're trying to honor that and we're trying to uh, to make room for that to be and that was kind of the lesson in the relationship as well. Uh, I wouldn't go back and trade it for anything because my daughter is incredible and I love her so much and I'm so glad she's a part of this life with everybody here and sharing, sharing this place with us. I'm just completely stuck on words right now. So I'm going to move and... Uh, they will come it'll take a bit of time but they'll come so trusting the process i'm gonna make a move here switch gears i feel a need to do that 
time to get out of here. So I'm gonna go see Jeff. down here I bet you that lake is just going bonkers right now <laughs> sweet a little lake is called cat lake I don't know if there's fish in that lake but real popular swimming destination Today I'm going to work on Jeff's van and uh, he's got some electrical stuff we got to do. He's got a Victron battery monitor to install, which is super exciting for Jeff. It's going to change his life, I'm sure, because now he's actually going to know his battery levels instead of just looking at the voltages. And um, he's also, his charging from his alternator hasn't been working for a little while, so we're going to replace that. Uh, if we can do it today, we're going to install a new smart isolator for him. Uh, to get that up and running. Uh, so right now he's just relying on solar power. And uh, what else are we doing in there? We gotta tidy up some wiring. He's got a new heater. I don't think we're gonna get into that today. Um, he might get somebody else to help him with that. We'll see. Uh, Cause he's planning on leaving Ontario here at some point. And uh, I think there's someone over there that might, might give him a hand with that too. Anyway. I'm just gonna square a few things up with him today and so that he's in a better place, if you know what I mean. Uh, so let's go say hi. Jeffy, good morning. Look at this. We're already starting, are we? Yeah, we're gonna get going soon, I think. Okay, okay. So we're gonna put this into Jeff's van and we're gonna put this into Jeff's van. This is the smart, smart isolator and this is the uh, Victron this one's the uh, BMV 712 Bluetooth enabled battery monitor. So that's the same one that I have in my van, but it's really good. And that's all the junk that came out of his van. <laughs> there was a bit more junk, but that was it. And um, I rewired his, he's got some, um, what are those things, light bars? Anyway, I, I tidied that all up in here so that's done, and then, yeah. Anyway, we're gonna test everything out. Right now, you can't really see it, but that little black part in the center of the frame, that's where his isol smart isolator is right there. So it's kind of buried in there, which is great. Anyway, if he wants to get at it, he just has to take the three bolts off this and move this out of the way to get at it. It's currently sending 255 watts back. Yeah. So it works. You, you know how charging off your alternator. No, I'm charging off my alternator. Okay. And you got solar too, so now you're good to go. You're good to go. And I got the electric. And you got this lovely Victron thing that says the Bears Den Power. Yeah. We're gonna have a fire later. I'm started up, ready to go. He started up. He's ready to go. I'm going to town. Might as well have a shower kind of in and out of his van and working underneath on the ground and all that stuff. So it'd be nice to get cleaned up and then I'll drive up to a lake just not too far away from where we are. Rumor has it that it was just stocked. So I'm gonna go up there and check my line in the water for a bit as my reward for the end of the day. But it's already like 7.30 p.m. so I don't have a lot of light to do that. Fun to go fishing though today. Because tomorrow's a busy day too, and then the next day I'm down in Vancouver. And then it's Vancouver, Vancouver, Vancouver. I'm probably not going to film a lot while I'm down in Vancouver. Um, honestly, most of it's just to spend time with my daughter. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, she's not going to be around here very much longer. And uh, that's, uh, that's the sad part, you guys. She's um, gonna be moving to Bali with her mom, which is basically on the other side of this blue ball of ours. And um, the sad part is just being disconnected. Like, I love that kid so, so much. And uh, man, I really wrestled with this one. Um, 
there's something progressive with all of this too. And I'm trying to uh, embrace that side of it, even though we're gonna be pretty far apart for a little while. What I'm gonna end up doing is going over there to visit her. Um, I'm like, I don't know what's next. Probably travel and go fishing and forage for plants and shoot video and just be by myself and try to, I don't know, just kind of digest everything that's been going on for me for the last while. It's been a lot. And these guys know my story. I just, I haven't shared it with you guys because I just, I just don't know how to find the words to really talk about it. But I mean, the good part about all this is um, eventually I'm going to be visiting Bali and uh, we'll probably get some snorkel gear and maybe a spear and do some spear fishing under the water. I have no idea what the regulations are and stuff like that over there, but it'd be great to go and shoot some YouTube videos over there part time as well as here. So it'd be a whole new kingdom of plants to learn and fish to catch and all that kind of stuff. I don't think they have hunting over there though, but uh, probably a lot more yoga and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, we'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna go to town and get a shower. Okay, I got my trusty setup here. That's how I hook my worm. And I got my bobber, it's probably about a four foot lead on that. No weight, so I'm gonna cast that out here and see what happens. It feels so odd, you guys. I've got people like chilling on the rock beside me that are just like having a good time. There's people like over there, just all relaxing. I'm, like, feel like probably the only dude fishing. <laughs> Oh man. All right, we'll see.
Leave it there, okay? 